Israelites according to the Holy Bible. And what do we come out here to teach? The laws of God. Right. Right. Give me John chapter 8 verse 32. What's your name, sister? Teresa. All right. What we're going to show you in the Bible is what the Lord God calls us. All right. What we're getting ready to teach you is going to set you free from many of the different doctrines that we have been taught to that are lies. All right. That keep us on the bottom. Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 8 and verse 32. And you said not the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What's the truth? The truth is that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans scattered across the whole earth are God's holy people. All right? That's the truth. All right? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are God's holy people. You know what God calls us in the Bible? He calls us the Israelites, That's all right? right? I'm going to show you just how special we are. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. I'm going to show you how special we are according to the Holy Bible. Because your pastor never read you these scriptures before. Right. He, never read you, he never read you these scriptures. I'm going to show you. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7, and verse 6. Yeah. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Bible says that the so-called black, Hispanic, Native Americans are a holy people according to God. All right, come on. The Lord that God have chosen thee. He chose us, but we don't feel like we chosen all the time, right? Because we live out in the ghettos. Any, anywhere you go, we live in the ghettos. See? Am I right or am I wrong about that? Right. Wherever you go, if you go to Chicago, where are we? We in the ghetto. Right. You understand? We go to Newport News. Where are we? We in the ghetto. You go to Hampton. Do we live in the suburbs? No. Where do we live? We live wherever the most crime is. Right. If you go to find where the most crime is, that's where you go find blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You understand? That's the prophecy. That's what we read about in this Bible. Come on. The Lord that God. But listen to what God says about the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Come on. Have chosen thee. The Lord has chosen us. Come on. To be a special people. To be a special people. Come on. Unto himself. Unto God. Come on. Above all people. No, below. Above. Did you hear what that said? Now, let me ask you this. Are we so, is all men created equal according to God? Is all men created equal according to God? I'm talking to you. Is all men created equal according to God? You say yes. But what do you believe in this Bible? The Bible don't say that. You understand? The Bible don't say all men are created equal. Read it again. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Unto who? Unto himself. Did you hear that? The Lord chose us to be a special people unto himself. Right. Come on. Above. No below. Above. No equal to. Above. If I'm above all people, are we on the same level? No. Did God create the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to be on the same level as everybody else? No, Jeez. God didn't. Te God didn't create us to be on the same level as everybody else. Wake him up. You understand? We gotta change our minds in this ghetto. We gotta change our minds in Virginia Beach. Right. We gotta change our minds in Virginia right. because God didn't say that we're supposed to be equal to everybody. So that means you gotta stop fighting for equality. Right. Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God called us to be above all people that are upon the face of the earth. But your pastor never read you that scripture before. Right. He never read it. This is the same Bible that we're reading. The same one. You know why we out here? Because all these sisters be complaining, talking about, I can't find a good man. You understand? All, and all the brothers be like, these hoes ain't loyal. Right. Ain't that what y'all be saying? Ain't this, don't the sisters say, I can't find a good man? Why you can't find a good man? Why the sisters out here can't find a good man? I'm going to show you why you can't find a good, a good man according to the Bible. I'm going to show you a scripture. Give me Sirach chapter 26. I'm going to show you why you can't find a good man. It's for all my sisters that's looking for a good man. You understand? The Bible is going to teach you why you can't find a good man. Read what you got. Yes, sir. The book of Sirach chapter 26 and verse 23. A wicked woman. A what? A wicked woman. God says that a wicked woman, come on, is given as a portion. Is given as a gift. Is given as a portion. You understand? To a wicked man. To what? To a wicked man. To what? To a wicked man. The Bible says that you can't find a good man because, because she's not a good woman. That's why you can't find a good man. You didn't hear that? Read it again from the top. A wicked woman. A 
wicked woman, come on, is given as a portion. She's given as a portion, come on, to a wicked man. To what? To a wicked man. To what? To a wicked man. That's why you can't find a good man. My sisters cannot find a good man because they themselves are not good women. Good. You understand? You have to change your mindset because the wicked woman and the wicked man is a match made in heaven. You understand? A wicked woman and a wicked man is a match that's made in heaven. Are y'all married? Yes. Y'all are married. Very good. Give me Sirach chapter 41. All right. Give me Sirach chapter 41. I'm going to show you something in this Bible. Read verse 8. The book of Sirach chapter 41 and verse 8. Woe be unto you, ungodly men. What did the Bible say? Woe be unto you. What's woe mean in the Bible? What's woe? W O E. What's woe mean? What's woe mean? What does it mean though? Mean like, like uh. Woe means destruction. So the Bible is saying destruction. Read it again from the top. Woe be unto you. Destruction, destruction be unto you. Come on. Ungodly men. Ungodly men and women. You understand? What makes a person ungodly? Sin. Very good. Come on. Which have forsaken. Which have what? Forsaken. Which have done what? Forsaken. If I've forsaken something, what does that mean? Forget about it. I forgot about it. I left off from it. I forsook it. You understand? Read. The law of the Most High God. What have ungodly men done? Forsaken. The law of the Most High God. What have ungodly women done? Forsaken. The law of the Most High God. So an ungodly man and an ungodly woman have done what? What have they done? Forgotten. They've forgotten what? About God. They've forgotten about God and God's laws. Right. That's what an ungodly man and women have done. That's why they are match made in heaven for each other. They both hate God. They can dwell together in peace. You understand? In peace. Now, if that ungodly man wants to find a godly woman, what does he have to do? He has to change. He has to become a godly man. What's going to make an ungodly man into a righteous man? What's going to do that? What's going to convert him? Repentance. How do you? How does a person repent? Say sorry, God. sorry, is that it? I just say sorry and I'm good. Sorry. I'm not gonna do nothing else wrong and don't do. It. Very the, now, do our people? I like what you said. The brother said, "This is how someone repents. You say sorry, God, and I'm not gonna do whatever that sin was. I'm not gonna do it again. Right? That's true repentance. You agree with that? Do our people today? Do we have true repentance? Are we filled with that in our neighborhoods? Say it again. We don't. You know what we do? We commit sin, and then that night, we send our prayers up. And then the next morning, what do we do? We do it all over again. You understand? You think God is pleased with a people like that? Say it again. No, he's not. Give me uh, Psalms 94, verse 16. My brother right here. You, you, you. My brother with the blue pants on. Come close. Come close. All right? Come close. We out here teaching, trying to build the men up. We need the men in our communities to get right. Why? Because the men are going to do what? They're going to set the whole world in order. That's it's right. going to start with the man. Right. You understand? I'm glad that I got men before me right now. Right. Sis can stay in the house. You That's understand? Right. right? If they see enough of y'all come come to this camp sign, you know what they're going to say it again? They're going to come over here too. You right. understand? That's what's going to happen. But I'm glad I got the men here because we need the men to do this. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 94 and verse 16. What? Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? You know what the Bible just said? Read it again. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? God says he needs men to rise up for him against the evildoers. That's what God says, right? So I need strong men to do that because we can't have no weak men standing up against evil. Right. The evil's going to consume them. You understand? They're going to see the big booty. You know what they're going to do? They're going to break their neck to look at it. You understand? Then they're going to think about it that night. You understand? Then they might be, you understand? That night they're going to be beating their meat. You understand? We don't need weak men like that. Are y'all those weak men? If y'all are against the evil doing, who's going to rise up for the Lord? Against all the evil that's going on in Twinkin' Now. Who's going to rise up? 
What a minute that's gonna rise up and tell these little niggas out here to stop killing each other. What a minute that's gonna rise up and tell these little niggas stop selling drugs to each other. What a minute that's gonna do that. Read it again from the top. Who will rise up for me against the evil doers? We need men to rise up against the evil doers. You know what? We need our sisters to rise up too. You know why? Because when I pulled in, you know what I saw? I saw little girls, probably 10, 11, 12, over here by the playground, and tell you, guess what they were doing over there? Guess what they was doing over there? You know! Tell me what they was doing! Tell me, sister! I bet my brother's gonna tell me. What was they doing over there? Twerking. They was what? Twerking. They was twerking! Hot 10, 11, 7, 8, 9, little girls over there twerking, shaking their ass. At the playground! They shaking their ass at the playground! And it's men standing over here just watching. It's men standing on the corner watching little girls twerk at the park. Ain't no man or woman gonna come out here and tell these little girls to stop twerking? To stop shaking their ass? What you think a little girl shaking their ass gonna get? You think they gonna get a husband that loves them? That's gonna take care of them for the rest of their life? Who's gonna stand up against the evil out here then? Who's gonna stand up with a man and a woman that's gonna tell these little girls, stop shaking your ass, sit down, close your mouth, learn how to be quiet, learn how to serve. Learn how to be a, a, a help to your mother, to your father. What are men and the women that's going to make these little girls do that? Me. Where they at? Read it again from the top. <laughs> Who will rise up for me against the evil doers? Who's going to rise up for the, Lord, for the Lord against all the evil doers out here? Who's going to do it? I'm going to give you a law. You understand? This is why the blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans are on the bottom of society wherever you go. It's not just here in Virginia Beach. It's all over the earth. It's all over the earth. I'm going to show you a law that we break. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Is that what I want? Yes, sir. Read what you got. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 29. Bring it out. Excuse me. If, excuse me. Do not pass the truth thy daughter. You know what the Bible says? Read it again from the top. This is a law for the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Yes. Read, read it again from the top. Do not pass the truth thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Where the woman at that's not going to prostitute their little girls? Oh, you didn't know having your little girl on the corner shaking their ass was prostituting her. You didn't know that? Yes, that's prostituting your daughter. You understand? What you think is going to come from that? Huh? What, you, what are you teaching her to do? To be promiscuous, to be sexual, to not value her body. You understand? That's what you're teaching your little girl to do. Right. You, you think these little boys don't like seeing little girls shake their ass? Yes, they do. You understand? Yes, they do. You know who's, that, that little girl is supposed to be preserved for the man that's going to marry her. You understand? But by the time she's 14, 15, 16, at that rate, she's not going to be a virgin anymore. Right. She's going to be touched. You understand? So a, a man or a little boy is going to touch that girl. You know, and don't get mad when it happened. Don't get mad because you allowed your daughter to be out in the street shaking her butt. Bring it out. The Bible says that's prostituting your daughter. I'm going to show you why. There's evidence of that. Read it again from the top. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Let's the land. Let's what? Let's the land. Let's what? Let's the land. Let's the city that you live in, the neighborhood that you live in, come on. Fall to whoredom. Fall to what? Fall to whoredom. Fall to whoredom. You know what whoredom is? A neighborhood full of boyfriend and girlfriends. Right. A neighborhood full of baby mamas. A, ma a neighborhood full of baby daddies. That's the land falling to whoredom. It's not a normal thing for your community to be full of baby mamas and baby daddies. Jeez. That's not a normal thing. You understand? That's called whoredom. Right. The land has fallen to whoredom. You understand? But guess what? There's repentance. For all my black, Hispanics, Native Americans who God called according to his purposes. There's repentance for you all. You can change that. You just got to repent. You understand? You have to learn God's laws. Why are God's laws important for us today? Huh? Why is God's laws important for us today? Give me 1 John chapter 3. I want verse 4. I'm going to show you in the Bible why God's laws are important. You understand? Read what you got. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Read. Whosoever committeth sin. Whosoever does what? Committeth sin. This is why God's laws are important. We're showing you right now in the Bible why we must know God's laws. Come on. Transgressive. Whosoever does what? 
Spirit commit a sin. Whosoever does what? Commit a sin. Whosoever commits sin, come on, transgresses also the law. Transgresses God's laws. You understand? Amen. When you commit sin, you broke one of God's laws. But our people today don't know God's laws. Right. If we don't know God's laws, then we're not going to know why we're in oppression. Why we in captivity. Why we can't get a job. Right. Why we keep getting sick. You understand? Why we feel depressed. We're not going to have answers for these questions if we don't know God's laws. Right. We're going to be in sin. The Bible says that we will be in sin. Yeah. And if we're in sin, you understand? Then we're not doing good according to the Bible. We're doing very, very bad. You understand? My brother, sister, come over here. Come learn the Bible. All right? This is your history book. This is your book right here. This is not the white man's book. Those are lies taught to you by the white man. Right, this right. is your book given to you to uplift your people. You understand? But when you reject this, where is your hope? What can you put your hope in if you reject the Bible? What do you have? What can you put your hope in? Nothing. My brother, what can you put your hope in if you, if you reject the Bible? What, what were you hoping? You understand? What's your, what's, what, where do you come from? What's your nationality? My brother right here. You're Puerto Rican. You're Puerto Rican. All praises. What's your nationality according to the Bible? Tribe of Judah. You come from the tribe of Judah. All praises. You know what tribe and everything you come from. You know what tribe Puerto Ricans come from? I'm going to show you in the Bible what tribe they come from. Give me, uh, but first, let me show you your nationality. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right, I'm going to show you in the Bible how I know that you're an Israelite. You tell me if these things happen to your people. All right, have you ever heard of the Israelites before at all? All right, you're not Puerto Rican. All right, first of all, do you know what that means? It means rich poor. That's what Puerto Rican means. It means port of riches. You understand? You're not a port of riches. That's what the white man saw when he went to Puerto Rico. Right. Then he named the island off of what he stole from you and your people. You understand? You're not a rich port. You understand? Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments. All his what? All his commandments. We've rejected God's commandments in Twin Canals. We don't, we don't keep God's commandments out here. You understand? We have to learn them all over again so we can come up out of the curses. You know what a curse looks like? A curse looks like Section 8. A curse looks like baby daddy, baby mama. A curse looks like somebody just got murdered down the street from where I live. A curse looks like they selling drugs on a corner and I got to come home to that every single day. A curse looks like the little girls out here shaking their ass at the playground. That's a curse lifestyle. We're not supposed to be living like that. And you understand? God said that curses would come upon his chosen people. Are these things happening in the Chinese neighborhoods? No. Are they happening in the Jewish community? No. Are they happening in the uh, Japanese community? No. Are they happening in the so-called white man's community? No. These things aren't happening like they happen in our community because we're the cursed people. Right. We're the cursed people out here. The Bible is talking about us. We fit these curses. I'm going to show you a curse. You tell me if you and your people fit it. Give me verse 32. The sons and the daughters shall be given unto another people. Well, your sons, your forefathers, you understand? Were they given to another people? Were they given, taken, children, taken from their parents, then given to another people? Did it happen to your people? Yep. Did it happen to your people? Yep. Yes. Come on. And the ass shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. You know what that means? That means their parents were sad because they didn't have any power to keep their children. You understand? When you be, when your eyes fail, when you long for them in your heart, in your mind, when you be sorrowful, who did that happen to? That happened to the Puerto Ricans. That happened to the black man. That happened to the Mexicans. That happened to the, the Haitians. That happened to the, to the Jamaicans. That happened to all the Israelites scattered across the whole earth. We got the same history. We not, we brothers. You understand? Blacks and Latinos can't be fighting. You understand? We can't be at beef with each other. You know what I'm talking about? Huh? We the same people. Right. Black Hispanics is the same people. We get the same forefather. His name is Jacob. It was changed to Israel. He had 12 sons. You come from the son named Ephraim. Right. He comes from the son named Judah. Y'all brothers, y'all can't be fighting. I'm not talking about y'all, but your people. We got to learn to get together because we suffer in the same curses wherever you go. Right. No difference between the black man and the Hispanic man. You understand? Because the Hispanic man like to say, me no Negro. Well, you suffer in Negro curses just like us. Y'all selling drugs to each other just like us. Y'all killing each other just like us. Y'all being oppressed by the so-called white man just like us. Right. Read. Right. And there shall be no might in thy hand. Give me verse 48. Did this happen to your people? 
Verse 48, you tell me. Come on. Therefore shall thou serve the enemies. Did the Puerto Ricans have to serve their enemies? The Puerto Ricans, did they have to serve their enemies? Yes. I'm, I'm talking to you, young man. Did your Puerto Ricans have to serve their enemies? Yes. Come on. For what? The Bible's going to tell you for what. Come on. Therefore shall thou serve the enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst. In what? And in thirst. My brother right here from the tribe of Judah. All right. Did your forefathers have to serve your enemies for food? Con. For say it again? Con. Con. For what else? For everything. You understand? For everything. The Bible's going to tell you that. Come on. And in nakedness. And in what? And in nakedness. What's that mean? In nakedness. If you have to serve your enemies, all right, in nakedness, what do you need to cover your nakedness? Clothes. That you had to serve your enemies for? Clothes. Did your people have to serve their enemies for clothes? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> did your people have to serve your enemies for clothes? Yep. You. Did your people have to do that? Yeah. Yes. They did. They did. You understand? They had to do that thing. All right, come on. And it won't of all things for everything. Your people had to serve their enemies. You understand? They had to serve their enemies for everything. Nation is men leading by example.